How's it going, Knights of the Round Table? My name is Night Gamer Rex, and welcome back to Corpse Party. And in the last episode of Corpse Party, stupid bitch jumped in the pool, and I had to save her again, of course, because <sighs> girl is stupid. So I need to go over here, and I need to check out the red door, I believe. At least that's what I think. Shit. Ugh. Which one do we give it to? I don't know! I don't- Oh crap, that one's after me. Hey! 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 No! No, okay. Okay. Um, what do I do? Shit. Shit! 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 No! Damn it! Hey, come along. Here we go. Where's the other one? Okay, that one's just... So why is this one following me? What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? I don't know. You know what? You want it so bad... You want it so badly here. Just take it. Oh, this is the headless one. <sighs> Ugh! She's... Got no head above her chin. Jeez. Ugh. How am I supposed to know whose tongue we've got? You don't. Pull out the tongue bag? Why do you gotta call it a tongue bag? Sure. That's my gargling sound, if you couldn't tell. That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. The little girl's spirit is staggering towards Ayumi, blood gushing up from her gaping cross-section of, of head as she walks. Please be the right one. Takiko Suji? This is yours, isn't it? I'm giving it back. Offered the spirit to Kiku's tongue. <laughs> what? What happened? The other ghost is headed this way. We have to run. Well, shit, bro. Haha, ah, you're stuck. You suck so much. There you go. Come on. Nailed it! Them skills. Them skills. Yep, get stuck. Get stuck, bitch. Alright. Alright. Well, it seems like I'm doing something good. Can I go to the outer wing now? Nope, there's the red dress, bitch. Hey! Where are you going, pretty lady? Here we go again. Where the hell's it gonna take us this time? <sighs> Apparently, wherever damn pleases. Where your friend was splattered. The floorboards beneath that wall. Uh huh. Right under her globby entrails. Yeah. Where the floor dips and the blood pools. Drip, drop, drip, drop. Smelly, smelly, icky, icky. Get in there good, and dig it out. Well, hopefully the exploded person isn't my friend. <laughs> no! No! 
get a good laugh out of this. You sick son of a bitch. Oh God. If that's where it is. I'm not sure we can ever bring ourselves to get it. Is someone there? Murishige? You're alive? Ah, Kishinuma. And our class rep. I'm very glad to see both of you safe and sound. <laughs> hmm? What happened? It's a long story. So where have you been? I was in the second wing until a short while ago, but suddenly lost consciousness. Okay, so he's been switching between spaces as well. Because I was about to ask, how did he get here? And when I woke up here, it felt as if the air had somehow changed. Oh, yes. And I did briefly cross paths with Mikida and his sister. You... you did? So they're okay too? They are. Though when I next ran into Mikita's sister, it seems she and her brother had parted ways. Huh? Marishige? What is that in your hand? Ah. Uh. Ah! Uh. Marishige appears to be grasping a blood-soaked pouch in his hands. Hmm? Oh, this. I, uh, found it under the floorboards in the hallway. How convenient! How convenient! Just up these stairs. Is it some kind of... Is it some kind of charm? Do you want it? Please, take it. I'm merely searching for a certain someone, so I have no need for charms at the present time. This guy's freaking me out. We received another tongue bag from Marishige. As with the others, there's a student ID name tag attached to the front. Heavenly Host Elementary School, Class 5-2, to two, Yuki Kano. Well... I should be going now. Is something wrong, class rep? You don't look like you- You look like you've seen a ghost. Ah, yes. One more thing. Mikita said we should all try to meet in classroom 1A. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing. It wasn't from, you know, Suzumoto's spot. Maybe it shifted over a few feet, and he got it from there. I mean, if he didn't, then... That really freaked me out. Did you see his hands? They were covered in blood. Yeah, well, bitches be bitches. Alright, now where's the girl? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go save real quick, and then I'll give the girl her tongue. And then I will go to classroom 1A? I guess. Because this is gonna be a bloody long episode, because I am getting tired of this game. This is probably gonna be another 30 minute long episode, so... Because I've posted episode after episode, and it's just so long. Alright, girly. I have your precious tongue. Yep. Get it back! Get it back! This girl is missing an eye. Oh. This girl is missing an eye? There you go. All we have got is its tongue. Is that going to be enough? 
What do we do? Pull out the tongue bag. Yes? Well, I gave the other girl her tongue, and she was missing half her head, so... The girl lowers her head and begins rocking slowly back and forth. Yuki? Kano? <gasps> this is for you. It is yours, isn't it? Offer the spirit Yuki's tongue. Hey, you. Thank you very much. Yes! Yay! Nailed that shit. <laughs> we did it. We did it, Shinozaki. All three of them. All that's left is the girl in the r No. No more. Every time I talk to these ghosts, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to death myself. Do you have any idea what that's like? I keep picturing how I'll look when I'm dead, and I'm not even trying. It just pops into my head all on its own, and it's such a horrible image. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. Back to my mom and my sister. And Mikita. Shinozaki. Alright. Next one is mine then, okay? So just pull yourself to- What? God damn it, not again! That's what I'm thinking. This one's big too! Uh. The chapter's coming to an end! Yes! Frickin' yes! It's about dang time! Ugh! Oh, the book! Oh, the black thing! I hate that thing so much. Did the chapter end? Please tell me the chapter ended. Ugh. Was I... knocked out? This has been the longest chapter. Like, dear god. Where... am I? What? Okay... This is that classroom from the girl- or from the teacher's memory. Huh. This is... our classroom? No foolin'? Nope, they're dicking with you. Guess there's no Satoshi or Miss Yui or anyone else, huh? Yeah, I guess. Their shelves are filled with personal effects belonging to class 2-9 to nine primary and assistant homeroom teachers. We're collecting to buy a bouquet of flowers for our dear friend Susan Suzume, who will be leaving us for a new school after the festival. 300 yen per person. Contact Yumi Shinozaki for payment. Oh, this is our classroom. What is going on? The needle on the clock in the hall is pointing to eight, and there's no- there's not a soul in sight. Am I back? So I can't even leave the room. It just tells me what time it is. Okay. Shinozaki! Hey! Wake up! She's breathing, at least. Shinozaki, 
Come on, wake up already. Take a look around you. I can hardly believe it myself. But here we are. It's different. It's not your classroom. No way. Ah, we're back? For real? Is this really our school? I don't think it is. It's really real. Check it out. Here's my desk. Mine too. It's right here. I can't believe it. It's true. Yeah. We made it. We're home. We're home. Fuck yeah. Suck on that world. Wait, am I actually home because I set the spirits free? Huh. <laughs> You know what I would be doing? I'd be trying to leave the school. I wouldn't be just sitting around just be like, Oh, ha, ha, ha I'm back, yay. Leave! <laughs> <laughs> Is the school dicking with me? I never thought I'd live to see home again. Guess there's no Satoshi or Miss Yui or anyone else, huh? That's what it said before. Venturing out in search of others, you find that even the janitor has likely gone home. The lights are out and the halls are pitch black. Only the red glow of the light next to the fire extinguisher offers any respite from the quaint, quiet darkness of the school hallway. Standing around in the darkness, darkened corridors of our school building at eight in the evening just feels so surreal. As the thunder and rain grow in intensity, the windows begin to can condensate with moisture, turning white in contrast to the corridor sea of black. Huh. Is this... Reality? Was everything up until now just a dream? <clears throat> Where am I right now? And what am I doing? Ah! What? Shinozaki? What's wrong? Oh, I split up! Damn it! That was my fault. What the hell and shit, dicks? Ugh. What the hell is this? Where are the desks? Uh, uh, it's not over, is it? Why isn't it over? Why? Damn it. Uh, it's you! No! Go back! Don't come any closer! <laughs> it was a raining evening, after school, just like this one. On the day I was kidnapped, I remember I had a fight with my mom that morning. Why, why is she telling us this? I, I have no idea. I didn't want to see her face. So after school I decided that instead of going home, I'd park myself in the outdoor walkway for a little and watch the rain. That's when Mr. Yoshi Yoshikazu showed up. He sat down next to me. I told him all about my fight with my mom and he listened very closely. 
and just kept saying, uh huh, uh huh. He was sick and couldn't speak much, you see. But he was a very kind man. I really liked him. But then. <laughs> you two are nice people. I'm so sorry. She's so tiny. She must be fifth grader. Yui Kano, right? Huh? Thank you for what you did back there. For making the effort to help those of us who were killed in that school. Didn't we succeed, succeed though? Why are you still here? No, you didn't. But we returned your tongues. We gave you back your ability to speak out. And we even got your murderer to repent for what he did. Is it just that you can't forgive him no matter what? Appeasing us isn't about forgiveness. It doesn't matter if we forgive or not. Repentance is between the criminal and the victim. It's the sole act capable of moving us. And we exist as fragments of the sacred ground upon which Heavenly Host is sealed. I believe that moving us is your best course of action. But it's not enough. His repentance just wasn't enough. So you're saying his words, the words spoken by the doll, weren't good enough to appease you? That's not... Huh? So what then? Why do you feel the need to trap one in innocent stranger after another in this godforsaken place? You child spirits of the one who summoned us there, aren't you? That's not true. The, m the hell you'd mean by that? We're just the cogs that hold the close spaces together. But you... You killed Suzumoto, didn't you? Wait. Huh? Let's hear her out. I'm just glad I was able to even get the two of you back to safety. Why the hell are you suddenly so concerned about us? I heard a situation like this from my sister once. A lost soul the, whose wife was ended violently and abruptly, leaving her with a mountain of worries and regrets. It's kind of like stopping short at the edge of a madness. With all sorts of thoughts and feelings swirling, or, swirling around in your head. Your kindly nature and your sudden hatred and panic begin to spin around and around and just start acting out without any sort of control. Your sister some kind of medium or something? Yeah, something like that. So what you're saying is, this little girl and the creepy little girl we met before are two sides of the same coin? I feel for you. I really do. So please, please, bring the rest of them back. Mikita, Miss Yui, and everyone else, too. Bring them all back home. Come on. You can do it, right? I don't think that's possible anymore. Why not? Those closed spaces have eaten a lot of innocent souls. Far too many, in fact. The grudges of those who died there have filled every last corner of them. There's no room left. And because of the agony and pain has nowhere else to go. It's begun feeding on the minds of souls like us who are bound there. 
it won't be long before I turn back into a vet vengeful spirit who attacks people like you without mercy. So, we're going to lose you as an ally then? So why don't you just hurry up and bring them home right now? Isn't there any way for us to save Mikita and the others? There may be one way. Wh what is it? I think you already know. You have to return to the closed spaces. Find all four of us Heavenly Host serial kidnapping and murder victims. And put us all to the rest. And put us all to rest. Then the closed spaces won't have their cogs anymore. And they'll begin to fall apart. And you just might get your friends back. You expect us? To go back? And this time, instead of just having one person left to appease, we have to go back to the drawing board and appease all four of you? Why? Couldn't you tell us the reason our previous efforts weren't good enough? What is there to hide? It's just... something I don't want to remember. But... If you really want to know, I will tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened. Yuki's spirit gently took hold of Yumi's hand, and in an instant, their two beings seemed to merge together in a single mind. Ah! What's going on? Shinozaki! It hurts! It hurts! What are you doing? Ah! Okay. Huh? What happened to me? Didn't I pass out? So why am I fully aware right now? I can't see a thing. And I can't move. It's like that feeling you get when you're really tired. Sleep paralysis, I think. Uh. Uh, where? Why can't I move? Sakiko Shinozaki, the little girl in the red dress, and the only survivor of the horrific murders that occurred in Heavenly Host Elementary School. Following the incident, Sakiko's family fled from the area, moving to other prefecture to escape the frightful memories that remained there. Strangely, however, I've been unable to locate any records of Shinozaki family. No matter where I look, the only information I can find about them comes from newspaper reports on the Heavenly Host murders. Granted, when an elementary school becomes the stage of for a grisly incident such as this, perpetrated by none other than the principal's own son. It stands to reason that the scandal would serve as a primary focus for public interest, with all the other details fading into the background. So of course, after learning that Saikiko was safe, further news of her whereabouts was largely ignored in favor of the media circus surrounding the school. But there's one, but there's more to it than that. People weren't just uninterested in learning of Sakiko's history or whereabouts. There was simply no data to be had. Are you saying that Shinozaki was actually? the girl who died and it some sort of time loop happened to how to make this actually happen or something what's going on i can't move my body because of sleep paralysis i guess but i can clearly see the room i'm in now 
There's one boy and two girls in here, aside from myself. Well, that boy on the top tied up is a boy. That's a boy. Okay. I recognize them. They're the children of who were killed in Heavenly Host during the incident. But they're still alive. Unfortunately, they're all bound hand and foot and just sprawled out on the floor. And so am I. That's the real reason I can't move. Now I'm blindfolded. I can't see a thing that's happening to me. And since my hands and feet are tied up, I can't remove the blindfold either. That makes- that just makes everything so much worse. I guess because I can't see, I begin to listen more intently. <laughs> The helpless cries of the other children echo off the walls of the cramped room. I'm so scared. It feels like my head's going to explode. What are you doing to me? Why am I blindfolded? Untie me! Cut the ropes! I want to be able to use my hands and feet, please! Please! I kept begging and pleading, but all I heard in response was a man walking away from me. In order. Okay. In order. I've never heard screaming like that before. It's pure, primal terror, cutting through the air like a perfect sine wave. It's the boy at the end. It feels like he's been screaming for an eternity. I think he's been killed right now. What is he doing to him? No one deserves this. Why isn't God allowing him to fall unconscious so he doesn't have to suffer? inhuman screams of a young boy being ripped apart from the inside have finally come to a halt. No! 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 Without even a single moment of silence, the first of the girls in line is the next to scream for her life. And the symphony goes on. take any more of this. I'm losing my mind. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! A 
is it still going on? Come on. Just die already. Die already? God. What is wrong with me? You know what? I don't care. Just get it over with and leave me in peace. Finally, after hearing a sound like a heavy object being dropped, the noises stopped and the room grew quiet again. Those footsteps are getting closer. All my hair standing on end at this point. Everything below my stomach feels like it's frozen and I've suddenly been stricken with severe diarrhea. In order. God. Why am I relieved by the silence? The kid next to me just died. Which means... It's my turn now. Ugh. Someone's got me by the hair. They're pulling my head up. And taking off my blindfold. Which means I get to see the face of my killer. The four missing children were found in the basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary School. Unused and officially sealed since the building's construction. When authorities entered, they were greeted with an inhumanely horrific sight. Based upon the evidence at hand, the murder weapon was determined to be a pair of large sewing scissors found in the hands of the accused. Investigators suspected some hesitation on the man's part. However, as the deceased victim's wounds did not indicate that his full strength had been used. Nonetheless, he had clearly acted with extreme malicious intent. The official cause of death for the three murdered children has been listed as loss of blood flowing following removal of the tongue. But the actual state of affairs was not quite so clinical, nor even so pleasant, if you can believe it. The following details have been exploited from information previously unreleased to the public, or at least previously unreported by news outlets. These details of the crime had, are based on the official police testimony of Sakiko Shinazaki herself. Evidently, the victims were bound, blindfolded, and spaced out on the floor, <laughs> then killed one by one. One was repeatedly stabbed in the abdomen with the a foreman sh aforementioned pair of scissors, then had many of his internal organs forcibly dug out. His discarded innards were found partially buried beneath the earthen floor of the basement room. Another was stabbed in the head dozens of upon dozens of times, to such an extent that all flesh and bone above her jawline was essentially minced away. Within by, with my blindfold removed. The sight that appeared before me was more horrific than anything I could possibly have imagined. The person staring back at me, brandishing a blood-soaked pair of sewing scissors, wasn't the large man from earlier at all. It was one of the children. The girl in the red dress. Holy shit! It was a little girl. Her face dyed red with the blood of her victims. She was staring intently at me with soulless gray eyes. And then... She just started giggling. Snip, snap, snap, snap. <laughs> she
she was opening and closing the bloodied scissors over and over again, and the sound kept echoing through the room. Then, she took those dull, rusty, thoroughly blood-soaked blades, and slowly brought them closer and closer to my left eye. How? Why? Why is it you? <laughs> no. No. No! Ah! Ah! Why did she do it? The third victim was stabbed in the left eye. An in indeterminate number of times. Until her eyeball became soup-like in consistency. She was eventually just left like that, slowly bleeding to death in horrible agony. Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been inflicted that her killer went back and severed the victim's tongues. Learning the truth about these proceedings is shocking even to me. It makes it nearly impossible to accept the murder as anything but a monster. And bearing witness to every moment of this was a seven-year-old girl named Sakiko. In many ways, she was the most pitiful and long-suffering of them all. But it was through her tearful, frightened testimony that she, Yoshikazu Yanagihori, was officially charged. Now going back to the hunt for information on this unfortunate girl's whereabouts, it was her words that ultimately led to Yoshikazu's sentencing. Therefore, it comes as no real surprise that sensitive information pertaining to her and her family would be withheld. That's to be expected. What's not expected, however, is that there's not even the slightest trace of this information left to find. It's as if it simply never existed. Therefore, I cannot help but consider alternate possible explanations. And I remind you, this is more conjecture. But one question keeps nagging at the back of my mind. Was Yoshikazu Yanagihori really the murderer of the three victims? Is it possible this crime was not actually perpetrated by him at all? Think about it. In his final days, Yoshikazu was incapable of communicating with others through speech. And despite his childlike reversion, he'd always been a personable and friendly man. As the saying goes, he wouldn't have hurt a fly. All his relatives, friends, and neighbors confirmed as much. Shocking to hear that such a kindly man could commit these unconceivable atrocities. He certainly had no motive for the crime either. There was nothing for him to gain from it. Then again, he may simply have lost his mind. Look at his father. It was around this same time that Principal Takamine Yanagihori suddenly began speaking in tongues and acting in a most peculiar, peculiar way. Not to mention scribblings and incomprehensible inconsi in in gibberish all over his walls, as if possessed. He seemed frightened of someone and would often be found crouching in the corner from his office, moaning and thrashing when visitors came by. If he could wind up in such a belligerent state with no warning, and perhaps so too could his son. I believe that we're looking at a curse far more powerful than anything man could devise. From the time it opened its doors to the day it closed them forever. Heavenly Host Elementary School's sealed basement room has existed as some form of cursed ground. And to find the underlying cause 
We must go back beyond the infamous kidnapping and murder incident. Back a whole 20 years. I believe I may found a clue that could shed some light on the situation. It may be a bit far-fetched, as leads go, but it's a lead nonetheless. Regrettably, since Heavenly Host was not only closed down but demolished altogether, and another school built in its place, it's no longer possible to investigate the basement room directly. But my protege, my prodi my protege, has found what may be the next best thing. Something that could take the impossible possible once more. Preparations are being made to pursue this lead even now. Being sure not to miss the next installment. It may be the scoop of a lifetime. Kayu Kabiki, 2003, 722. Continued in chapter 5! Yes! Continue to 5th chapter, Corpse Party. Yes! Freaking... Yes! Oh, man. This game is so freaking good. But it's so damn long. Alright. What a great chapter. What a good freaking chapter. And this episode is going to be around 45 minutes long. This is the longest video I think I've ever posted. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to become a Knight of the Round Table today. And as always, I will see you guys later.